Welcome back everyone. It's been several weeks since we've been able to give you an update on the 8.1 liter Corvette conversion. The engine has come in and out at least three times since the last video. Please realize that this is a very long process and it takes lots of time and effort to get everything dialed in. This is the first conversion of its type to take place in a C8 Corvette and this is not a simple plug and play engine swap. This is also not a professional video production by any means. In this video, you will see some of the issues Larry is having with the camshaft position sensor and the crankshaft tone wheel correlation. We are just going to let the GoPro roll so you can see how this is coming along. Okay, motors come out again. The problem was we had a cam crankshaft phasing problem between this crankshaft here that cam phaser there. The computer told us we had 16 degrees difference where something wasn't lined up right. And that probably was because we made this timing cover right here. See the bottom part that's red, that actually came off of Volvo 8.1. And this chunk here came off of an um, 14 to 17 small block timing cover. So it's got the cam phaser and the cam sensors. We used it because this sensor here is the same as the one that's used in the C8. So we had common there, this is the same too. When we welded this piece here onto the timing cover, we fit it in there to where it fit and figured that was close enough. Apparently it wasn't. <laughs> so this sensor is 16 degrees off. From, it should be up here. It should be up here 16 degrees. So it should be up here another quarter inch or something like that. So since we couldn't make a new timing cover, didn't want to make a new timing cover, we took the inside of the reductor part Uh -huh. this guy here and we cut it apart in here rotated it and re-welded it this was one of the first ones we tried and we blew it apart on the lathe right off the bat this thing's supposed to go in like this and we tried cutting it in straight with a cutoff wheel and it grabbed a couple of these and it just sprung all over the shop there's a couple of springs and... These guys here are all supposed to be one piece, and obviously wow. they're not. That's what the inside looks like, huh? Yeah. So, where do those springs actually go? They fit underneath this mess. Mm. So, they, they are what backs up the cam. They line That's up on it. those dowels, line this up, and they make this thing do this. So, it rotates under hydraulic pressure, and the yeah. spring retracts it. The hydraulic pressure operates this piece here. Okay. So, when we caught this on the lathe, obviously it broke this out and it threw it around the shop. So, we had to go to another sensor. Actually, this was a backup. We were testing this one first to see if we could do this and found out we couldn't. Now to cut this one, we used a boring tool. This one we just chucked in the lathe and turned it. And it was just spinning. This one here, we used a boring tool that came straight down and cut it this way. And what it was doing is it was putting pressure on this downward and it didn't break all the spot welds inside. Uh -huh. So that worked out good. And then after we separated the two pieces, we just reclocked it maybe two thirds of a tooth here. So wherever this tooth here was, we moved it 16 degrees and that put this leading edge 16 degrees in front of this. Which is basically replicated off of the 6.2. Yes. In the same position as the 6.2. Yes. Would, but now as, as it sits on an 8.1. So this is a cute little hydraulic valve that goes in the middle. All these little things go together, and this is all junk now, but it looks good. It's a good, uh, good instructional tool. Yeah, a good <laughs> demo stuff. So you want to give us a walk around on the engine one more time okay. before you stuff it back in? And I know that yep, we're ready just kind of give us an overview of everything you've had to Got do. Got all the cooling hoses on, cooling here, electricals back on. These little guys here, there's four big resistors, or wire wound resistors. They give the electrical connections the same as the displacement on demand does underneath the valley cover. For the computer you have to have a load on it or else it'll set codes because it'll think that it's not hooked up. So we made this little box here that has these ceramic resistors in it and they run off of this guy here and tell the okay, computer and that's that it's to still simulate there. the displacement on the demand. Right, the coils. It's still telling them the coils are there. They're not going to work but we can do something to make that not work. Then we got a temperature gauge here, the fuel lines we made, air conditioning is still good. 
everything went through. I primed the pump a little while ago, took all this off and ran it. So the pump's primed, so we got oil back in the motor. This is your custom sump that you had to make? Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and run the motor. I need to run it and check and make sure that at 16 degrees was difference between crankshaft phasing and camshaft phasing was camshaft degrees and not crankshaft degrees. Because when we started uh, indicating the cam and crank again, the 16 degrees we chart changed here made 32 degrees down here. So all our numbers were all wanky. So this started giving us some concern because I'm assuming the computer is measuring the difference between these two parts here. But if it's reading it down here, then this should have been moved eight degrees, not 16. And we don't know yet. So we're, I'm, I'm assuming the 16 is correct, but we don't know. After we started seeing the 32 degrees here, we don't really know where the computer's reading it at. Yeah. If it's reading it off the crank, it should have been eight here. And if it's reading from here, then the 16 yeah, is correct. Six or seven pages of paperwork. Trying to figure out, there's the pulses on the camshaft reluctor. So we got those, that's a picture of it there. And this is what the LT2 motor is. This is the description that goes along with it. It's a lot of hallmark, it looks like. Somewhere. <laughs> See, then we got like two more pages there and three more pages here. We learned how to do it better. Wow. The more times we did it, the better we got at it. So this is kind of like Dr. in the uh, camshaft position sensor. Right. Uh, and now we can up. find, see where it talks about the small gap here having this duration? We can find the small gap somewhere, let's see, second small gap. Like these numbers here all went through and matched. We started going through and you can lay this at the right relationship and the numbers all matched except for the 30 degrees, 32 degrees. Yeah that we changed the relationship. So it actually looked out, looks like it works good on this. That turns a lot better. It's kind of cool. Okay, now we gotta find our pink lines. Oh, we gotta go that way. in the car. Ready or not? Get back on engine so we can actually see. I gave it a little throttle and it just went boop. Okay, because what we were looking at before. Well, we were looking at mass airflow sensor and yeah. timing. Okay, there's mass airflow sensor. It was down low. Throttle position. Let's sensor. Do that one map. Okay. Yeah, we might as well see that. Okay, what we want to do our fuel ignition, ignition timing. timing. There we go. Um, Ignition timing start signal, I get that's interesting. 12 degrees. Okay, fuel pressure. Yep, pretty good. Okay, and was there anything else? I don't time. think so. Okay, show selected. And, oh, we don't. Okay. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna start it up and see if I can get it to sneak up with a little bit of throttle. Well, it had timing, yeah. I gave it some. As long as you give it throttle, it rides. Where's our mass, mass airflow sensor? Mass airflow's better too, because before it was at four.
right side. It's 210 degrees, so watch that. Yeah, it's coming down too, the 216. adventures we had the crankshaft sensor from an 8.1 this guy here doesn't work with the computer so this guy here goes in there and this is where the sensor goes for an 8.1 okay way different than an LS so what we did I did is this half here is an LS sensor and then we cut the bottom half of this off so here's the bottom half that goes there 
So we cut this piece off, took the LS sensor, put it in there, turned it down, and now the LS sensor is getting epoxied onto this piece, and then it drops in here. Oh, one thing that's really interesting, the LS sensor's got a big magnet in the end. Now you can see it sticking. Yeah. See this guy here? It got nothing. The main. So that's why it was working with one and not the other. Yeah, so this sensor, whatever they do with this sensor, it's not the same kind of sensor. It's not the same thing. So we made this one using the LS sensor in it. That plugs in there. So, okay, so if I understand this correctly, the top portion of this is an 8.1. Correct. This, this top portion. And then where you've cut it, you've grafted the 6.2 liter. 6.2. 6.2 camshaft position sensor onto the 8.1. Correct. Housing, and you've soldered the, the connections. Soldered the on, connection so on they're the, all one piece. And they were epoxying it so it has a certain and, amount of rigidity. So the 8.1 and 6.2 sensors are relatively different because the they're eight, different. They and don't work. It doesn't work. Only the 6.2 works with the 6.2, not the 8.1. Well, 8 .1. this even may work with a 5.3. All the LS but versions for may purposes not, of your build, it this, doesn't make any difference. The 8.1 does not work. No. So our 8.1 sensor will not read. It'll read. It'll read the reluctor, uh -huh. but it won't recognize it with the computer. Okay. So that's what we're doing. Is we're making something that the computer recognizes. So we're using a sensor the computer's wanting to see. Uh huh. And we just made a structure that mounts it in the 8.1 because the camshaft reluctor in this guy is all the way down inside here on the crankshaft. Oh, we got a picture of that. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. So here's well, that's it for now, folks. We hope you enjoyed this segment and this update. We'll keep filming and hopefully we'll get you further along here as we move forward. The engine is back out again and Larry is making some modifications to the camshaft position phaser and hopefully we'll have it up and running sometime this week and we'll get you an updated video. Again, we appreciate your patience and please stay tuned and we'll hope to have something out again soon. Thank you.